Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's contestants. Anthony and Abby, welcome back. You were on the show last time. We gave everyone two chances to reach our pointless final, and today is your last chance. Um, so your boyfriend and girlfriend, how long have you been together? Um, two and a half years. How did you meet? Um, we met in a nightclub near where we live. <laughs> and then met again properly a few days later. Yeah. 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 Not quite remembering who the other one was. No, I don't know. <laughs> uh, who knows? Who knows? Uh, very good. Well, best of luck on this afternoon's show. Uh, next, we have Patsy and David. Welcome back. You were on the show last time. Today is your last chance to reach the final. How long have you been together? Uh, well, we've been together nearly 40 years. We're married 35. Fantastic. Well, very best of luck this afternoon. And welcome, Ryan and Dan. Where do you two come from? We're from Plymouth. And how do you two know each other? Uh, we've known each other for about seven or eight years now. We, uh, we run a less than professional cricket team in the South West. Very good. And uh, generally socialise with each other more than either of us feel comfortable with. Less <laughs> professional. What, what were you on to your foot, Dan? Uh, I've had to have reconstructive surgery. The, uh, ah, yes. The professional diagnosis was uh, odd shaped feet. Is it going to be less odd when it comes out? It looks foot shaped to me. Let, l let's hope so, yes. Well, I do hope so. Well, best of luck this afternoon. Thank you. And finally, we've got Karen and Lawrence. How do you two know each other? We got friendly on the internet about seven years ago. Steady now. Yeah. <laughs> Steady now. The next time I looked, we had three small children. <laughs> Wow, that's a virus, isn't it? <laughs> um, good Lord. Well, Won't spread any further. Let me know what programme you're using. That software sounds fantastic. Um, anyway, best of luck this afternoon. I hope you do very well. We'll find out more about all of you throughout the show. There is one person, of course, I have to introduce you before we go any further, and that is the man with all the facts and figures, the man who sets all the questions, the man who knows everything. He is my pointless friend, and he's called Richard. <laughs> so, Richard, who, who do you fancy this afternoon? Well, uh, we've got a few unusual questions this afternoon. There's a few unusual sort of things we don't normally do. Um, I know I, I, I said Patsy and David were going to win last show, and uh, they got knocked out in the first round, as so often happens. And Patsy just begged me not to uh, predict they were going to win again. But okay. I still, I think, I still fancy them. I still think they could do it. Anthony and Abby, of course, got through to the head-to-head -head last time, so they'll... Uh, they'll be very, very confident, but two, two great new pairs as well, so I think it's, it's wide open. Well, we've asked all our questions on Pointless to 100 people before the show. To stay in the game, our players need to score as few points as they can, and they do that by coming up with those answers that as few of those 100 people gave as possible. Now, the thing everyone's looking out for is a pointless answer that none of our 100 people gave, and each time that happens, we will add 250 quid to the jackpot. Phil and Peter won the jackpot last time, so today's jackpot starts off at £1,000. There it is. <laughs> OK, let's play. Pointless. In the first round, each of you must give me one answer, and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. You have to be careful, because if anyone gives me an incorrect answer, then this will happen. Exactly. Whoa. We don't want that to happen. Every time that happens, you will score the maximum of 100 points. OK, guys, the first category is... Words. There we are. Can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first? And once you've decided whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many words ending in os as they could. Richard, can you, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, we're looking for any word from the Oxford English Dictionary that ends O-S-S. -S. Uh, we're not allowing abbreviations, hyphenated words or proper nouns. There are unbelievably 59 words in the OED that end O-S-S. -S. The other thing I have to say is we're not allowed to use the word os. Os itself is an auspicious greeting or a wishing of good luck. So I, I wish os to you all. Yeah, uh, os, os. In this round. Very good. Okay, well, Anthony and Abby, you all drew lots before the show today. It's your turn to go first. Abby, you good on words? Yeah, I'm not bad. Um, I think I'm going to go with emboss. E M B O S S. Oh, I like that very much. Excellent. We're looking for nice obscure words ending in O S S. I rather fancy emboss. Let's see how many of our 100 people said. Emboss. Look at that. Down it goes. Eight. 
fabulous low score for emboss there, Abby. Well done. Richard, emboss. Yeah, emboss, it literally means to cover with protuberances. Emboss. To cover with what? Protuberances. Ah. Don't ask me to say that again. <laughs> Good. Well done. David, you're a retired teacher. You'll know, you'll know plenty of words ending in os. Yes, got a few ideas. I'm going to try... Well, Fleetwood Mac, Albatross. Very good. Shall I spell it? Go on. No, I think we know. We know what, it, we know what the word is. We're aware of what the word is, yeah. OK, OK. I just like the idea of getting a retired teacher. Go on, yeah, spell it. Come on. <laughs> how, how are you spelling that, Dave? <laughs> OK, we're hoping to, that you will score as few points as possible with Albatross. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Thirteen. Some Coleridge fans in there. Albatross, Richard. Yeah, Albatross. You know what that is. It's an albatross. It's also three under on one hole in golf, if that helps. All right, on to our next pair. Ryan. Ryan. Words, a strong point for you? I use them every day. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I've got a degree in words. <laughs> we are looking for words ending in O-S-S. -S. I'm going to hope that people are concentrating on the sound os, so I'm going to go for gross. G R O S S. Oh, I like what you've done there. You're going to go for gross. Let's see how many people said gross. <laughs> That's not a bad score. Only 19 people said gross. Your score is 19. You are, however, the highest scorers at the moment. On to Karen. Karen, you're making a pain face. Oh, I know, I know. They've done so much better. Um, floss. Floss. Is it uh, rubbish? I don't know. A lot of people don't floss. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. How many of our 100 people said floss? Oh. Ho -ho, halfway house, 50. That scores you 50. Richard. Yeah, well, floss is literally the, the, the rough silk that sort of uh, entombs the cocoon of a silkworm. Um, though I think we use it slightly more, in slightly different ways these days. Otherwise, 50 people wouldn't have said it. Um, very good. OK, we are halfway through the round. Let's take a look at the scores. Well, Anthony and Abby doing very well on a lo nice low score of eight there. Lawrence, you're going to have to try and come up with something really low scoring there to, to save yourselves being eliminated at the end of this round. Um, but very best of luck. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK. Lawrence, you are the high scorers. You're going to have to try and score as low as you possibly can. So remember, we are looking for words ending in os, O-S-S. -S. Have you got one? I have. I'm afraid, though, it's dross. <laughs> Yo, what, what is it? Go on. What, what's, what's your word? <laughs> Dross. OK, dross. You are hoping to score as few points as possible. Let's see how many of our 100 people said dross. <laughs> Not bad. 29. That takes your score up to 79. Richard, dross. Uh, dross is literally the scum thrown off from metals using the smelting process. Quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice use of the word quite. Quite. That's quite interesting. OK, Dan. Right, Dan. I had a word that came into my head straight away. Now I'm sort of half doubting myself, but uh, along the same sort of lines as Ryan, I'm going to go with engross. E-N-G-R-O-S-S. -S. Engross. Yep. Mmm, I like engross. There's the red line that's come in. You have to come in below that red line okay. to be certain of a place in the next round. OK, we're looking for words ending in os. Dan has given me engross. Let's see how many people said it. It's good. And it's good enough. Look at that. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> he turns down the punching of the knuckles. Leave him hanging. Yeah, OK. Poor Ryan. <laughs> um, engross, Richard. Yeah, so Ryan and Dan have gone for gross and engross. That's good tactics, That's isn't good. it? Uh, engross, we know what it means, but, but literally, uh, it means to write in large letters, engross. That's where it comes from, to write in large letters. See, that is interesting. <laughs> uh, very good. Thanks very much, Richard. Oh, dear. Well, Lawrence and Karen are still the high scorers. They're on 79, a little bit out in front. Patsy, 
Remember, we are looking for words ending in os, O-S-S. What are you going to give me? Oh, don't shake your head. Disaster. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I taught maths for 30 years. Don't do words. Oh, there must be a mathematical <laughs> word ending in os. Surely, surely, surely. Can't think surely, of one surely. at all. Well, look, they're 79. They're way out in front. Ah. Uh, well, I mean, I can only come up with really useless ones. So I'm going to say toss. <laughs> You're going to give a toss. <clears throat> Let's see how many of our 100 people said toss. There's your red line. It's, 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 it's quite high up. Come in below that with toss and, uh, and you'll be fine. Let's see. Oh. 68, that scores you, taking yeah. your score up to 81. Toss, Richard, toss. Everybody in Britain knows what toss means, I don't need to tell you, <laughs> which is why it scored so highly. <laughs> right, OK. Anthony. You've had quite a while to come up with, with... One's been taken, I've oh, had I was another one. Say, but, yeah. uh, You've got another one? Yeah, right, I'll go for it. Gloss. You need to get 72 or less. There's your red line coming below that, and you're through to the next round. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said gloss. Oh, it's good enough. Well, that gives you a score of 26, taking your score up to 34. So that's the end of round one, and the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid, are Patsy and David. What would have been your dream subject to come up, then? Well, there's not many on maths, is there, really? No. Nah. have many rounds on maths. Alas, no. Well, we're going to find out from Richard what, uh, what else you could have said. And you're going to kick yourselves, I'm sure, when you, when you know what pointless and low scorers there were in there. Richard? You know what? The word cross would have seen you through. Hoss would have seen you through, Doss would have seen you through, Across would have seen you through, but there are a load of pointless answers as well, loads and loads. Uh, Probos, do you know what Probos means? No. It's the, it's the trunk of an elephant. Probos would have been pointless. Caros, uh, uh, a caros is a, is a sort of sleeveless jacket made out of animal hide. Sort of thing Ray Mears probably wears. Yeah, so Ray yeah. Mears wears a caros. I bet he does. Uh, <laughs> Circumcross, which means to surround with crosses, although also used to. Uh, I mean, circumnavigate these days. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look at a few more. Uh, cater cross, which simply means diagonally. Outgross means to make more money than. Uh, Reemboss. Do you know what reemboss means? No. Come on, you know what reemboss means. Is it, is it to, to make, once again, cover with protuberances? No, as everyone at home knows, it means to hide oneself amongst bushes. <laughs> to reemboss. <laughs> Uh, let's take a look at three more, and all of these, autocross, rallycross, motocross, all forms mm. of uh, motorsport. OK, let's take a look at the, uh, the worst possible answers you could have given. These are the ones that the most people out of our 100 uh, said when we gave them 100 seconds. Uh, in the third place was Moss. In second place, Loss. And anybody, the, 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 the worst answer you could have given? Boss. Boss, Boss. correct. Mm. OK, well, thanks, Richard. Patsy and David, I'm sorry, you just didn't have that pointless os knowledge you needed to make it through to the final. So I'm afraid we have to say goodbye to you, but you have been fantastic contestants. Thanks very Thank much you. indeed. <laughs> of the remaining three pairs, it's time for round two. Now, obviously, only two pairs make it through to the head-to-head, -head, so one team is going to be disappointed. You just have to make sure it's not you. OK, the category for this round is... British Geography. British Geography. Look how thrilled Dan looks with that. OK, can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first and who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many British rivers as they could. That's nice. British rivers. Richard? Yeah, the correct answers here are all major rivers in Great Britain. Uh, very simple, which is a, a blessed relief after words ending in os. Mm. Uh, all British rivers. Best of luck. OK, and as it's a new series, we've changed things around a little bit. In round two, we're going to give you a choice of seven possible answers in each pass. And I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, but do be careful because there's also at least one incorrect answer among the seven. Pick one of those and you will score the maximum of 100 points. Now, the first set of seven answers are... Tamar, Trent, Fern, Tweed, Tolton, Thames, Tees. Those thrilled contestants. <laughs> well, um, as always, the most obscure answers will score you the lowest points, but be careful not to pick those incorrect answers. 
Right, we're looking for British rivers. Anthony. Right, I'm going to go with T's. You're going to go with T's. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said T's. Down it goes, look at that. Fantastic, 12. Nice low score there. Well done. Twelve. The T's, Richard. Yeah, absolutely. Stocked it on T's up in the the northeast. Middlesbrough is also on the T's, isn't it? Okay. Well, thank you very much. Now remember, there is at least one pointless answer in there, and there is also at least one incorrect answer. So Dan, remember, we are looking for British rivers. Well, my British geography extends about as far north as Exeter, <laughs> but being from Plymouth, I do know that the Tamar is a British river. So. I don't think it's one that many people have said, so I'll go Tamar. Tamar. I like it. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Tamar. Oh, it's good. Down it goes. Oh, fantastic. Good call. OK, well, that gives you a score of three. Richard, the Tamar. Yeah, Tamar played right into your hands, didn't it? Coming from Beautiful. Plymouth. Yeah, uh, it forms most of the border between Devon and Cornwall, the River Tamar. Splendid. OK, Karen, what's your, what's your strong suit, Karen? What are, what's your dream topic? Probably more science, more science-based. Science. What do you do? I'm a radiographer. Blimey. Oh, I see what you mean. You, you really do want science. Mm. Radiography. Um, anyway, sadly, it's not radiography. It is it's rivers. Um, it is. And uh, they've taken out two for you. So in only five remaining, you know there's at least one pointless in there. And there's also at least one incorrect answer amongst them. Do any of them stand out? I mean, obviously, some do. Yeah. I know which ones are rivers. And there's two that I know I, I haven't, I'm not so sure about. So what are you going to go for? I'll go for Tolton, please. You're going to go for Tolton. Good for you, Tolton, which could be our pointless river. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Tolton. And if it's a correct answer. No! Oh, wouldn't you bloomin' know it? Thurn oh. is going to be the river. These guys are so good, you've got to take the risk, haven't you? Mm, I'm afraid that scores you the maximum of 100 points. That's, a, that's boring. She didn't want that. Yeah, that's, that's unlucky. The Tolton, which it sounds like a little sort of lovely little Hampshire river, doesn't it? Doesn't Meandering it? sort of through Andover or something. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's in Chile. <laughs> so, I'm sure that's is. why I've heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, the River Tolton, actually. Uh, let's take a look at the other answers. Uh, Tolton was actually it was the only incorrect answer up mm. there, so it's really, really bad luck. Um, let's knock a few of them off this. The Thames, obviously, that would have scored you 91 points, which would have been almost as bad. Uh, the Tweed would have got you an unbelievably small uh, two points. Yeah. It's just about the best salmon river in the whole of Europe, just two points, River Tweed. Uh, the Trent... Obviously, it's the, it's the third longest river in England, would have got you 32. And so, obviously, there's only one left, and that's the, uh, that's the pointless answer. Very well done if you got this. If you did get it, I'm guessing you're from Norfolk, because that's where it is as well, the Thurn. OK, well, thanks very much, Richard. We're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at the scores. Ryan and Dan looking very strong there. Nice low score of three. Looking particularly strong when set against Karen and Lawrence's high score of 100. Oh, dear. You're going to have to hope somebody scores really high on the next pass. And, Lawrence, the pressure's on you to find the pointless answer when we look at the new board. OK, we're going to come back up the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put seven more answers on the board, and we are looking for British rivers. Here are your seven options. Mersey, Clyde, Crouch, Murray, Churchill, Orwell, seven. Again, I have to point out that at least one of those answers is pointless, and there's also at least one incorrect answer amongst them, so do avoid those. What's your geography like, Lawrence? Quite good, usually. <laughs> Everything apart from rivers. I like countries. Yeah. I'm just going to remind you, you are the high scorers by quite a margin, so you are going to have to try and get the pointless answer if you're going to have any hope of staying in the game. I don't know. I've got to take a chance, and my chance is going to go with Orwell. Orwell. Well, that could be our pointless answer. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Orwell, and if it is a correct answer. It's correct! Oh, I have a good feeling about this. Oh! 
Very well done. Yeah. Two of our 100 people said all well. That means that you have a score of 102 in total. Richard, all well. Yeah, I'm guessing both of those people are from Ipswich. It flows through Suffolk, flows out into the, the sea at Felixstowe, the river Orwell. Mm, very well done. Ryan, we're looking for British rivers, and you've got six left to choose from. Anything leaping out at you there? Um, not a strong subject for me, rivers. Um, I'm going to have to try and play it safe, I think. You've only got three. I mean, you, you, you have to score 98 or less to go through to the next round. Yeah, with that in mind, I'm going to go for Mersey. OK. There's your red line there, just underneath the pink. I think you'll probably get under that. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Mersey. Yeah, it's good enough. Oh. Surprisingly low. Look at that, only 22 of them. Only 22 of them said Mersey. That takes your score up to 25. Mersey, Richard? Yeah, incredibly low score. Uh, yeah, runs from Stockport to, uh, to Liverpool Bay, and there's a ferry across it. Is there? In my understanding, yeah. Ah, someone should write a song about that. Um, now, remember, there is at least one pointless in there, and there is still at least one incorrect answer. Um, I think, Abby, you're going to find the pointless answer. I have a very good feeling about this. OK. I don't know. Clyde was jumping out at me, but I don't know. He does. He does do that. <laughs> I don't um, know, because if we get 100, then obviously we're off, so... I think I'm going to go with... See, Mersey only got 22. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I might go with seven. Yeah. You're going to go with seven. Yeah. You have to score 89 or less to stay in the game. There is the red line. It's very high up there. Seven's a very well-known river. Mm. <laughs> OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said seven. It's good enough. <laughs> there we are. Not bad at all. That scores you 49, taking your total up to 61. You're safe. You're through to the next round. Richard, the seven. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the longest river in Britain at 220 miles. And uh, they made a film about it with Kevin Spacey. Hey, hey you're becoming a seven bore. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Oh, uh, let's take a look at the rest and see where the, uh, the point this was and see what was wrong. Firstly, uh, let's knock Clyde off the list. Obviously, it runs through Glasgow. That would have got you nine, nine points, nine. the Clyde. Um, OK, there's three left here. I can tell you two of these are incorrect answers, and one of them is pointless. Uh, the longest river in Australia is the Murray, so that would have uh, got you 100 points. So between Crouch and Churchill, what do you think, Alexander? Between, between Crouch and Churchill? Uh, one of them's a river in Essex, one of them is a river in Canada. Uh, well, Churchill's a river in Canada. Yeah, absolutely right. Churchill is a river in Canada would have got you 100 points, which by process of elimination, and everyone in Essex will know this anyway, means the crouch would have been a pointless and would have added £250 to the jackpot. Uh, very good. Thanks very much, Richard. But at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid, is Karen and Lawrence. Bad luck. Chile? <laughs> Who'd have thought? Yeah. I tell you what, you should go to Chile. Well, no, my wife in the River Tolton. <laughs> no, 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 just, just, just splash her a bit, that's all. It'd be fine. Um, bad luck. Um, you, your, your topics didn't come up. Your, your, your science, geography, anything but rivers. Next time, maybe. Next time, next time, I'm sure. Well, Lawrence and Karen, uh, you just didn't have that pointless British rivers knowledge, I'm afraid, to make it through. <laughs> but remember, everyone gets two chances to reach our pointless final, so we will see you again next time for your final chance. But thanks so much for playing. You've been fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. But for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. Well done, making it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, only one pair can make it through to today's final, quite obviously, and play for the jackpot, which currently stands, in case you'd forgotten, at £1,000. <laughs> OK. You're going to go head-to-head -head on up to five questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer. You are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is to come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair to win that question. And the first pair to win three will be playing for today's jackpot. Let's play Pointless. <laughs> Here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many members of Monty Python as they could. Richard. Yeah, we're simply looking for the most obscure of the, the six comedians uh, collectively known as Monty Python's Flying Circus. Mmm. 
Interesting. Now, Ryan and Dan, because you played the best throughout the show so far, you get to go first. We're looking for an obscure member of the Monty Python team. Oh, yes. Are you 100%? Are you 100%? Yes. Say it. Yeah. All right. Go on, Dan. You're 100%. <laughs> 100% what? Oh, yeah. um, we're going to go with Pamela Stevenson. You're going to go for Pamela Stevenson? We are. Um, OK, Anthony and Abby. Well, we can only think of two. Um, so we're going to go with uh, Michael Palin and your fingers crossed. OK. <laughs> So that's Ryan and Dan in Resplendent Gold and Anthony and Abby in Cobalt Blue. So Ryan and Dan went with Pamela Stevenson. Um, let's see how many of our 100 people said Pamela Stevenson. Oh! Well, that's a wrong answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. OK, and Anthony and Abby are going for Michael Palin. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Michael Palin. <laughs> 62. Well, that's good enough. <laughs> Anthony and Abby win that point, so it's 1-0 to Anthony and Abby. Richard? Yeah, a walk over there. Uh, Pamela Stevenson was part of the Not the Nine O'Clock <laughs> News team. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of people at home who are, who are trying to think of all six, so let's take a look at all six and how they scored. Uh, the best answer you possibly could have given was Terry Jones. Then Graham Chapman, who used to write with John Cleese. Uh, Terry Gilliam, the American, the, the animator. And then our top three, there was Eric Idle, Michael Palin, who uh, you guys gave us. And the worst answer of all was John Cleese. That's the answer that most of our 100 people gave. No, in fact, the worst answer of all was Pamela Stevenson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, bad luck. 100% wrong, yes. as it turns out, Dan. Yes. Oh, dear. Bad luck. Um, OK, here's your second question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many heptathlon events as they could. Richard? Yeah, looking for any of the seven track and field events that make up the, the women's heptathlon at the Olympics. OK. <clears throat> Anthony and Abby, this time it's your turn to go first. <laughs> OK, what, do you, what answer are you going to give us? Give it. Um, we're going to go for shot put. We're just not sure if it's in the women's. But you're going to go with it. Yeah. OK, well, you're, you're in the lead so far, so maybe you can afford to take a little bit of a risk. You're going for shot put, Ryan and Dan. Uh, we, we, we think we've, we we think covered we've the got seven. seven. Wow. So I'm trying to think of skill now. So we were, we were debating the two jumps, weren't we? But yeah, we were thinking we might go for long or high jump, but we're hoping that people... Well, first, we're hoping we're right this time. <laughs> um, and second, we hope people might not know. So we're going to go for 800 metres. 800 metres. OK, Anthony and Abby have gone shot, but let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Oh, it's correct. Very good, 29. <laughs> Only 29 of our 100 said shot put. Let's see how many of our 100 people said 800 metres. And indeed, if it is correct. It's right. Down it goes. Oh, you won it. <laughs> Very good. So Ryan and Dan equalise. It's one all. Richard? Yeah, the 800 metres is traditionally the final event in the Haptathlon. It's actually the best possible answer you could have given. It was absolutely unbeatable. Let's take a look at, at all seven and how they scored. So as we see, the 800 metres uh, would have got you 14, as would 200 metres, actually. Uh, shot put would have got you 29, we've already seen. Then the 100 metres hurdles, and then right at the top there, high jump. Javelin, and the worst possible answer, long jump. Thanks very much, Richard. OK, here is your third question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many star sign animals as they could. Richard, explain yourself. What are you doing to us? Yeah, we're looking for any real animal used to represent uh, one of the signs of the zodiac, the star signs. We're not accepting humans, so there are seven possible answers. Um, right, this time, Ryan and Dan, it's your turn once again to go first. Which real star sign animal are you going to say? It's your turn. Is it? Yep. Brilliant. Go on, Dan. OK. Step up. We're, we're going to go for the ram. You're going to go for the ram? Yep. OK, we've got the ram, Anthony and Abby. Right, there's, we're thinking fish for Pisces. We're thinking, was he scorpion for Scorpio? Um, 
I think I think it's bull of a bull for Taurus. Um, and there's lion for Leo. I don't think that's anything like that. So I think we're tossing up between bull and fish. You want to go for bull, but she wants to go for fish. <laughs> so whoever wins this will go into the lead. You're you are absolutely even, Stevens, at the moment on one all. Bullfish. Fish bull. <laughs> I need one answer, and I need it today. Yeah, <laughs> if you think, if you've got a gut instinct, that bull is right, then. We'll go bull. Oh, as a Piscean, <laughs> I can't tell you how disappointed I am. <laughs> I'm a Piscean as well, so there you go. OK, we've got ram, we've got bull. Ryan and Dan have said ram. Let's see how many of our 100 people said ram. Fifty-six have said ram. <laughs> Anthony and Abby, let's see how many of our 100 people said bull. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Abby, should have gone fish. <clears throat> That's all I'm saying, should have gone fish. Um, OK, well, at the end of that round, it is 2-1 to Ryan and Dan. Richard, should they have gone fish? Well, yes, if you'd said fish, you would have just lost by even more, because that oh. would have scored you 75 <laughs> points. Uh, so it's not all bad. Let's take a look at the, the seven possible answers there were and which, uh, which ones would have scored you the best points. Scorpion. The Scorpio would have... Uh, it's 50 points, a big score, but it's the best you could have done in this round. A goat, which is Capricorn, would have got you 53. We've seen ram already. Crab, which is Cancer. Then bull, which is Taurus. Uh, Leo the lion and Pisces the fish was the worst answer of all, 75 points. 2-1. Very exciting indeed. OK, come on, Anthony and Abby, let's see if we can level this up. Here's your fourth question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many noble gases as they could. Noble gases, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for uh, good luck, guys, we're, and everyone at home. Uh, we're looking for any of the gases known as the noble gases uh, on the periodic table. Uh, we will not accept any newly discovered unnamed elements Specifically, everybody, and if anyone says this, I'm going to go mental, we specifically won't accept element 118. And, of course, of the noble gases, there are six possible answers, so you guys have got to find an obscure one, if you can find one at all. And anyone at home who can get all six noble gases, uh, that would be fantastic. Good luck. Question. Um, Anthony and Abby, obviously, it's your turn to go first. We're looking for a nice noble gas. I think Ryan and Dan looking a little bit confident there. Anthony and Abby. We're going to go for nitrogen. You're going to go for nitrogen. Uh, Ryan and Dan. OK, well, we, we think we know three noble gases. OK. Which isn't six. No. It, it isn't yes. six. But bag now, it is 50%, so we're happy with that. OK. Um, we're going to go for argon. Well, yeah, we're going to... We think neon will probably be the highest scoring one, so we're going to go with... Well, argon. which left us with radon and argon. argon. So we're going to go for argon. 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 Right. Being 2-1, if Ryan and Dan win this, of course, they are through to the final, and we say goodbye to you, Anthony and Abby. You have said nitrogen. Let's see how many of our 100 people said nitrogen. And if it's a correct answer, it's not a correct answer. It is not a noble gas. Ryan and Dan, you have said argon. Let's see how many of our 100 people said argon. This only has to be a correct answer for you to go through to the final. You go through to the final. 33. <laughs> so after our fourth question, Ryan and Dan win that round 3-1. Argon, Richard? Yeah, very good. I mean, it's actually the, the worst possible correct answer you could have given, but at least it was a correct <laughs> answer. So that's uh, seen you through to the final. There are six noble gases. Do you know them? Let's have a crack. Xenon, I know that one. Don't look at the board. Neon. Yeah. Um, Krypton. <laughs> um, oh, there's a r r r radon. Oh, no, so ra radon, which is the other one you were, you were going to go for, is the best answer you could have given. Uh, would have scored you just ten points. Then the Krypton, Xenon, Helium. This is like the new gladiators, isn't it? <laughs> uh, and Neon and Argon. Uh, both would have scored 33. Well done if you got all six of those. Especially well done if you got Radon. 
Very good. Thanks, Richard. Um, so the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid, is Anthony and Abby. We have to say goodbye to you. You've come through to the head-to-head -head both times. It seems very unfair to have come so close yeah. to the jackpot. Um, but you've been fantastic contestants. Um, what would you have loved to have come up then? Um, music, um, films, something. Music and film. Well, you've yeah. been fantastic contestants. Thanks very much for playing. Um, a big hand, please, for Anthony and Abby. <laughs> But for Ryan and Dan, it's time for our pointless final. Congratulations, Ryan and Dan. You've fought off the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. Wonderful. Wonderful, yes. Exactly, yes. Right, right. Now, though, you've got a chance to win our pointless jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at an impressive £1,000. There it is. OK, the rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer that no one else could think of. Now, it's something no one's managed to do today, so let's hope you can find one now. First, though, you've got to choose a category from these three options. Your choices are the Winter Olympics, the Oscars, or time zones. Look at that. <laughs> are you smiling because there's one there that oh, you just no. know so really, well? I was really Olympics. hoping for a sport question and yeah. the worst kind of sport <laughs> questions come up. The, w the Winter Olympics? Come we'd on. Have, we'd, have, we'd have done well at the Summer Olympics, I think. But, um, right, time zones, no. No. Just not doing okay. it. Okay. No. Um, I'd still go Winter Olympics. <laughs> we've got, we've got I said Pamela Anderson, and therefore you can go you what you Pamela want. Pamela Stevenson. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> we, yes. Shall we go? Yeah, Winter Olympics. Yes. Winter Olympics, please. You're going to go Winter Olympics. So, we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Winter Olympic host cities as they could. OK, Richard, explain this. Yeah, guys, we're looking for any of the 17 towns or cities that have hosted a Winter Olympics since its inception in 1924. Uh, one answer we won't accept is Vancouver, which is the host of the, the 2010 Winter Olympics. 17 possible answers. OK, your 60 seconds starts... Now. Right. Lily Hammer. Lily Hammer, um, I think Turin's hosted it. Calgary was an 88. Calgary, definitely. But I think they're all fairly popular. I'm looking for more obscure ones. Um, um, did Japan host it once? Yeah, well, I was going over Japan, but... Was it Tokyo? Where else is, where else is there to host it? Um, Canada, um, Vancouver's this year. Yep, so they've, they've, done, they've done it before, though, but yep. I, I'm not sure where. Um, I, I think there is one in Tokyo. Well, that's a punt, then. We'll, we'll, right. we'll look after that. So it's Tokyo. Yeah, I don't think we should go Calgary because of cool run-ins. Everyone will know that. Yeah. So we've got that leaves us Lillehammer, Lillehammer's... Tokyo and Turin. I like Turin. I didn't think of Turin. Turin is the most recent one. I think people will get that. Right. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to be... I mean, you know, Samaritz well, could be 15 one. 15 seconds. just where the bobs had run. Other Scandinavian countries? Uh, again, no, I'd, be, I'd be guessing. I don't know if they have. Well, no. Oh, OK, look. Let's go Tokyo, Lillehammer. Turin. Turin. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. There's your minute, and you're going to go Tokyo, Lillehammer, and Turin. Yeah. Okay. Which of those three do you reckon is the one you have most confidence in? Right. Yeah, to be pointless. To I'd say Tokyo is our strongest. Yeah. Okay. We'll put that one third then. Then yeah. Lillehammer. Then Lillehammer. Then Lillehammer, then Turin. and then, then Turin. Turin. Okay. We are looking for host cities of the Winter Olympics, and in reverse order of your faith in these answers, <laughs> we have Turin. Lillehammer, Tokyo. OK. How confident are you feeling? Not very. Not very. OK, well, your first one was Turin, which you thought was quite a nice, obscure one, but it was the most recent. Yeah, yeah. I think it was 06. So people, a few people might remember that. OK, we were looking for Winter Olympic host cities. You said this was your least confident answer. You need only to find one pointless answer to win that £1,000 jackpot. So let's see how many people said Turin. Now listen, only six people said that, and that was your least confident answer. It, it, it could be good. <laughs> it could be very good indeed. Six people said Turin, so unfortunately that is not a pointless answer. OK, you only have two more chances at today's jackpot. Let's see what your next answer was. Lillehammer in Norway. <sighs> Lillehammer was ages ago. It was quite well known. Why do you it think? It came to my mind 
straight away, so... Really? Yeah. OK, well, we are looking for Winter Olympic host cities. Let's hope nobody said this next answer, Lillehammer. This has to be a pointless answer for you to win the jackpot. Let's see how many people said Lillehammer. This is your second crack at that £1,000 jackpot. Down it goes. Last one was six. You have more faith in this one. You're right to. Down it goes to four. Well, you put them in the right order. <laughs> well, your best answer is the one you've saved for last. Can I have the name of those four people? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Right, you only have one final chance to win today's jackpot. We're looking for Winter Olympic host cities. You said this was the answer you were most confident in. This has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot of £1,000. We've really got to hope that nobody said Tokyo. This is your last crack at the jackpot. You've come so close. Six, then four. You're on target. I mean, you are on course, if <laughs> you're right. This not even be a winter host city. Well, if it is, I'll tell you what, if it is, we'll know. If it is correct, then there's a, there's a good chance it might go all the way down. Let's hope it does. How many of our 100 people said Tokyo, and is it a correct answer? Oh. Unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that all-important, pointless answer, so you don't win today's jackpot of £1,000, which rolls over to the next show. But you've been fantastic contestants, and you do get to take home our pointless trophy. Get in. Oh, we'll get it. in. We'll have it. If you're going to try and find the most obscure, if you become so obscure, there's every chance you might be wrong. But, um, yeah, bad luck. It, it, Sadly, no winter sports for you, Dan. Skiing, maybe. Skiing. Could you yeah. do a bit, maybe a bit of snowboarding, Straight actually? Straight in. <laughs> that boot could probably just be made to fit onto a snowboard. Straight in. You'll be better in time for the cricket season, though. I will indeed, yeah. That's good. Very good indeed. Um, well, bad luck. I'm sorry, I'm sorry that uh, sports you knew didn't come up. <laughs> um, but it's always tough, this jackpot round. Richard, what were those answers they should have given? Well, um, Tokyo is unlucky. Uh, the Winter Olympics have been held in Japan twice, uh, most recently in 98, which is in Nagano, uh, but also in Sapporo, but never in, uh, never in Tokyo. There were three pointless answers which would have won you the money. Well done if you've got any of these at home. Uh, in 1956, the Winter Olympics were held in Cortina d'Ampezzo, or Cortina, in Italy. Four years later, they were held in Squaw Valley, in California. And eight years after that, somewhere a lot of people uh, go every winter, Grenoble, in France, in, in 1968. Unlucky, guys. Bad luck. Thanks, Richard. Well, unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to Ryan and Dan. You've been fantastic contestants. Uh, thank you so much for playing. Thank you. thank you. So nobody's won our jackpot today, so it rolls over again, which means on the next show we'll be playing for £2,000. <laughs> Join us next time to see if somebody can win it on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye.